If you really like the content of this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up a dockerized web server to run PHP 5.6 with Apache Web Server version 2.4. Although modern web frameworks like Ruby on Rails or Python Django tend to be popular open source frameworks for creating new websites today, PHP actually has some staying power as many older websites still run on it, especially with WordPress. I was recently tasked with making updates to an old PHP application written by another developer, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to dockerize this application and get some practice running a LAMP stack along the way. However, setting up PHP on Docker was not as easy as I thought it was going to be. For one, I found out that the version of PHP that I needed for the program I was maintaining, version 5.6, is an older version, which makes it harder to install with more recent versions of Apache Web Server and Linux. The most recent version is 7.4. I spent a whole afternoon struggling with trying to get it to install on a Docker container using the app get repositories. And it turns out that version 5.6 of PHP is not supported with any version of Debian newer than Jesse. I ended up going on a wild goose chase for alternative repositories, landing on an archive site called Surrey, which is supposedly the best source for getting legacy versions of PHP, but I was still unsuccessful at installing it in my Docker container. Another problem that I had with getting PHP to work was installing the Apache module, which allows me to use it with the web server. I couldn't find an easy way to download that through a Linux repository, so I decided to just resort to compiling and installing the PHP from source code. This really seems to be the best way to install it. So here I'm going to walk you through the Docker file commands that outline the steps for creating your own LAMP server running PHP version 5.6. So I'm going to be starting with a blank Docker file and Docker Compose file. The Docker file is going to start with an image from the official Apache Web Server repository. The reason I'm starting with this specific version, version 2.4.23, is because when I looked at the history of the Docker file source code on GitHub, this was the last version that I can find that was installed on Debian Jesse. The newer versions of the Apache Docker images are installed on later versions of Debian which may not work with PHP version 5.6, which is the specific version that I need for the project that I'll later be working with. Now I'm going to add the packages we are going to need for installing PHP. We need the MySQL client because that's the database that the SAP is going to use, the dev library package, which importantly contains some tools that we need for configuring our PHP application to work with MySQL, the GCC compiler and make, which are going to be used to build PHP from its source code. And curl is a program which we could use to download the PHP source. And vim is just a text editing tool that I like to have in the Docker container because it's useful. Next, I'm going to write a line that uses curl to download the official PHP distribution from the internet. You can find it on the downloads page of php.net under the archived releases. We can copy and paste the link into our Docker file commands. Once the download runs and completes, the next step will unzip the file into the temporary directory. To build PHP, you need to run the configure command with the necessary options for whichever you want in your installation. In this case, I'm using the apxs2 command line switches, which tells it to build the Apache 2 module so that PHP can integrate with the web server. I'm also telling it to use MySQL and install the special MySQL I driver. The MySQL config that it needs as an argument is one of the things that comes in the lib MySQL client dev package that we installed earlier. I've also got a switch to install a PHP module called mbstring, which is a dependency for the application that I intend to run. And finally, you want to run make and make install 
which builds a program based on the arguments you provided to that configure script. These specific configuration commands I needed was the most difficult part of this project for me to figure out because it took me a while to assess exactly what modules I need to run for the legacy application to work. It took many hours of trial and error and sifting through forum posts on php.net. I guess an assumption I started with that turned out to be incorrect was that I thought that using a pre-compiled official Docker container or installing by apt-get would also install all the modules that I needed. But as it turns out that for PHP, compiling from a source is actually the best option because a lot of the libraries you may be needing to integrate in your application will be built and integrated at this step. The next command I make cleans up all of the temporary install files. Then the working directory command specifies the place where all of the project files will reside on the server. I'm also going to copy our custom Apache configuration into the Docker container, which I haven't written yet, but I'll get to that in a moment. We expose port 80 so the Apache web server can talk to the outside, and the command to start Apache is HTTPD foreground. So on the Apache image repository instructions, they provide a command for copying the HTTPD file within the container to the outside of the container. This will give us a template to work with, and we're going to use this file to make modifications on the settings for our Apache web server. So running the command that copies the file for us, now that we have the configuration file available, we can make the changes needed to get it working the way that we want. I'm going to first change the default documents directory to the location where we'll be hosting the project HTML files on the server. And we also want to add the library libphp5, the module that Apache connects to so that it could run PHP. You also have to add a directive in this configuration file so that Apache knows the process URLs ending with the .php extension as executable PHP files. And I'm also going to change the default setting for the error log so that it points to a file that we could read and we could tail. So now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and make a simple file to be a test page for our website. I'm going to add some simple text here with uh, just a little bit of HTML and the PHP info tag which should display our PHP configuration when the page loads. Now we're moving on to the Docker Compose file. The first thing I want to do is set up the persisted networks and volumes for this application to run. The external true flag tells Docker to make them persistent on this system. And now I'm going to set up the database container. This application uses MySQL version 5.7 mainly because it's going to be intended for Dockerizing a legacy app but for a new app, you're probably going to want to use MariaDB. So I'm at port 3306 to my local host, port 3306, and this allows me to easily access MySQL server from outside of the Docker container. That's an optional step, something that I like to do for convenience. And the MySQL data will be mapped to the external volume MySQL data 5.7. Now for setting up the Apache container, we're going to build the Docker file at the top level. Port 80 is going to map to port 8080 on our local host, and our source directory is going to symlink to the web server files directory within the container. Let's go ahead and run it. Oops, it looks like the first hiccup is that I've got to create the Docker external volumes and networks first. Okay, and now I got it running. And as you can see, it's running all of the steps that we made in the Docker file. It's taking a little while to download the PHP source code, but the configuration and compilation of the source code build is what's going to actually take a while. So now the Docker image is ready. And another hiccup I ran into is that it seems the command HTTPD foreground isn't able to be found as specified in the 
Docker file. And for some reason, specifying the same command in the Docker Compose file seemed to make it work. I thought that was kind of strange, but it's working now. So let's have a look at it in the web browser. So there we go. Our Apache web server is running. And as you can see, the PHP info configuration information. And that's the end of this tutorial. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for more content, and I'll see you in the next video.